Welcome to So Very Wrong About Games. Today we have an unboxing, an overview, and a review. If you like what you see, wait to the end. We have some links to our podcast. Here we go. All right. I'm going to unbox this. We'll see what it looks like. This is the deluxe version. These are the cards that that's why it's late because we have to wait for them to add those cards to the box. So, don't worry. Deluxe edition. Book just for the deluxe version. Looks fancy. Regular rule book. Nice gold embossed pieces. Markers to mark what territories that you've scored. And then the multiple boards. So you have different setups. And they're all double sided, so that's kind of cool. Some of them have purple bits on them, so it'll be a solo game. Lots of boards. I plan on using purple as a player color. We'll see how that works out. It looks like there's a scoring track. And then there's this other add-on thing that you can use. Extra bag. They have these cards that you can use to just because we don't want to talk about it because this is extra so we'll talk about it now because it probably won't be done in the review because it's sort of like a variant of these cards so you can, uh, start with some sort of setup before the game it'll tell you where to where to place certain villages and stuff so the setup will be different every time and then these are the main cards the art on these so you have player aids and then the art desert cards forest cards wind cards red ones Someone said that the yellow and the red were close to each other. I don't have a problem with that. They seem pretty different. Let's insert. Wait a second. This is orange. Orange and yellow, so yeah, I, for a second I thought they were both yellow, so there is a problem because I actually didn't even know. Look at that, that's pretty brutal. Anyway, so there's orange and yellow. It looks like the pieces aren't so bad, like the little huts that, you, that you're going to be using on the board, and they're a little bit different, so you can tell those ones apart. But these things. Ridiculous. Ugh. So I just gotta make sure you never play orange and yellow at the same time. Just you know, const you know, contrast. The other ones are like way different. So there's purple. I like the fact that the solo markers for purple so you can use it as a player color. And their huts are kind of neat. Sort of like Stonehenge looking. And the fact that each one is different. So there's blue. And red. Blue and red seem very similar. I guess blue is like a rounded top, whereas red is more pointy on the top. And then these are like tokens for the variants and start player. And 
and then you get the 3D mountains that block off parts of the map. And icebergs, and another part. The green, green tents. This cool metal coin for the Kickstarter thing. It's kind of neat. Probably the first player token. Red ones look like, and then the blue totems. These are the totems that you get in the territory. Last but not least, black pond. That's exciting when you look at all these other things. Just a black cylinder. Exciting. All right. So that's everything you get in the box. Nice big empty insert at the back. Anyway, that's that. So this is not going to be a rules explanation, just a quick brief overview of how Awari works. So your civilizations spreading across the map, building up your techno, no, you're just, it's a Euro area control game. You're putting these pieces on the map. You're going to have a hand of three cards and there's a simple three, two, one rule. You can play up to three cards, put up to two pieces into one territory. Now there's a little limit to that rule, like if there's no pieces in a territory, then you can only put in one, but you think that'd be a little penalty, but you can sort of plan ahead. You gotta look at this pool of cards here and know that uh, you can come back in the next turn and still keep that majority. So there's two scoring rounds in this game. The first one is a simple one. When the deck runs out the first time, you're just going to count up tents in a territory. And whoever has the majority there is going to get how many tents are there. So you can see in this case, blue has the majority here at four. So he's going to get eight points because there's eight tents in this territory. And then the next person is going to get as many points as whoever had the majority. So as because red has three tents, they're only going to get four points because four because blue is four and green is going to get three because the next player up has three and it keeps going down depending on how many players are in that territory and then you shuffle the deck up and go again and when the deck depletes the second time you finish that complete round and then you do the tents again and then there's just two other quick add-ons you're adding up settlements which is simply uh, a row of at least four tents on this on the road system and it could be longer, so you're going to get more points, or you can have multiple ones around the map, so you can count each one up. And then there's the totem scoring. Now, totem scoring is the only little fiddly bit. I don't know, for some reason, people couldn't get their heads around it. But if you have the majority of totems in an area, and it's adjacent to another area that you have the majority in, and they're all designated by these numbers, so you're going to go through the whole board by number, so you don't forget any. If you have the majority in both, then you count up the total number of totems in both areas and you're going to get that number of points. So in this case here, blue is the majority here and it's tied, so it still counts. So he's going to get four points here. These two are adjacent here, but he does not have the majority here, so he will not score any points here. Here he has the majority here and the majority here, but depending on the number of players, there's going to be these mountains out. So that is blocked for this game, so he'll score none here. And the majority here and here, that will be three points there. So you do the two scoring rounds, and then the game is over. And that is Awari. You know, Walker, I have to say that your special effects laden overview is really appropriate because this is the fourth version of a game that's been in print for about 20 years. Michael Schacht first published this as Web of Power, and then it became China, then it became Han, and now it's Awari. And by far, hands down, this is definitely the most attractive version of the bunch. Yeah, like these 3D totems, the artwork on the cards, the way that they depict these gods. And it's just like that art style that I really like. Michael Parks does a lot of prints and, it, and it's, he's not the artist. I'm just saying I just really like this style of art and the color palette, except for the two that are like together, like the, the yellow and the orange that are almost exactly similar. Other than that, everything really pops on the table and it's just great to play. Yeah, the usability concerns, the orange and the yellow, sometimes the board connections aren't as clear as they have been in different versions is a little bit unfortunate but honestly that's a minor concern when the visual package is this stunning and this consistent yeah and the amount of game you get in just like 60 minutes is amazing you got so much decision space when it's your turn you're looking at your three cards what can i do now can i squeak in and get a few points can i uh you know go for a settlement can i get the area majority here 
And then you also have to look at the cards that are in the pool for the next turn, right? Because if you're opening up an area, you want to be able to get back in there. You don't want to, you know, give an advantage to another turn. Not only that, it's got that gameplay that I love, Mark. Like when you, you can force your opponents to do certain things. Like you can, you know, sort of, you know, force their play. You know what I mean? And so they're half. So you sort of dictate what their next turn is going to be. Otherwise, you're going to get a great next turn. In a game with a very, very minimal rule set and a very short playing time, you've got short-term considerations, medium-term considerations, and long-term considerations all playing off against each other through relatively simple scoring conditions. So it's not like one of those tortured, endless series of scoring conditions. And Area Majority really is one of my favorite Euro games, or styles of Euro game. That and auctions are a great way to introduce meaningful decisions and trade-offs and lots of quality player interaction without any kind of direct punch-you-in-the-face conflict. Now, I've been I've been playing this game, as I say, on and off ever since I started the hobby in different versions. I don't know that this is the way that I would recommend it. Uh, if you don't have any version of this game and you really want to break into the system, Iwari is absolutely a good choice. For me, personally, I'm going to be sticking with Han because it's smaller, cheaper, and it actually has maps specifically scaled to players. Many of the versions of different maps scale to different players. Iwari, as Walker showed in the unboxing and overview, has many, many, many different maps, but they're not tightly focused with the number of players. And yeah, the art is more basic and you just have these simple color cards, but there's less chance of mixing them up. And the wooden components aren't as cute, but again, they're functional. And I actually find them easier to, to eyeball the quote unquote totems uh, in the other versions. But these, these are minor complaints. Uh, because a game this this good, this system deserves to stay in print over the years. And it's been one of my favorite area majority games. It's much simpler than something like El Grande. And it's much simpler than a lot of the other sort of intro games. But nonetheless gives you, as I say, those quality short to long term scoring, scoring considerations. As well as the quality interaction. It's a great package undercut only slightly by some presentation issues. And I think uh, any gamer that has any enthusiasm for Area Majority needs some version of this in their collection. And like Mark said, it doesn't have certain maps for different players, but it does have all sorts of different maps you can use. Uh, it has the solo version, has different variants, so if you get tired with you know what comes later, then you know you can you know spice it up afterwards. I've tried the solo version. I think that the solo version, this might be cynical, but seemed to be an accommodation for driving market tastes. Everything's got to have a solo version now, which sometimes I like. The solo version does not feel like the normal game. It felt to me like a, a sort of a tacked on ancillary thing that didn't really feel much like Love of Power or Iwari normally. Uh, so I don't really recommend that. But, you know, it's nice to have. And I like the different paths of victory, right? Because there's different ways that you can score points in this game. There's You can focus on the totems or getting more settlements or or the area majority and everyone. It's because there's lots of choice there, and I really like, you know, that in the game. It's like one of those, like an old school Euro, where you're always in, you can't turtle up and do your own thing. You're in the face of everybody else. There's always this, you know, player interaction everywhere and against everyone, and you're not restricted where you can play, and that's that's what's great about the Wari. And there have been subtle rules variations between the different editions, different numbers of cards in the display, whether or not there was mid-game scoring, under what conditions you could double scoring for various things, etc. And I have to concede that Awari has the best elements from all the ones that I like. It's got the biggest card display, which is nice because it increases control and reduces randomness. It has the mid-game scoring, which is not particularly consequential, but feels nice. It's a nice way to break up the, the tempo of the game and give a little sense of how people are uh, going and increases the relevance of the tents over the totems, which is nice. And so they've done a good job with some of the uh, elements making it sort of, trying to make it the definitive version. Uh, although at the end of the day, I'm happy with the smaller minimal ones. But again, it's hard to complain. That's all I got to say, Mark. If you've never played Michael Schacht's area majority system, starting with Love of Power, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. It's really, really, really well done. If you have the older versions and you're happy with them, I think you will you should stick with them and be happy. But if you, this is going to be your entry point into the system, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Unless, of course, you really like playing with both orange and yellow. And that's worry. I think you're full of